from Los Angeles, California. I've been doing this for about 10, 11 years now. And uh, just to go over this, because I know someone will ask, um, how I got into voice acting is that I've been an actor my whole life. And when I got to college, I ended up taking uh, what is referred to as a voice and diction workshop, or class. And that led me to taking another workshop that's specified in voiceover because if you want to get into voiceover, you really got to start taking those classes so you can get experience and you can get training and all of that. Uh, so from that course, from that workshop, I ended up meeting a wonderful person by the name of Tony Oliver. Uh, do we have any Robotech fans in here? Uh, Tony Oliver was the voice of Rick Hunter from Robotech. Um, and... <laughs> From then on, uh, he's been in this industry for over 40 years, and he's a director, producer, writer, all of the above. And uh, <clears throat> after I met him, he decided that he wanted me to audition for a show. And then a few months later, I was cast in my first anime show, and that was uh, Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha, which was an oldie, and I mean, at least for me, it's an oldie. Uh, and then, years later, uh, I was cast in, well not years later, maybe like a year or two later, <laughs> I was cast in a video game that you guys might know called Blaze Blue. Yeah, woo! Uh, where I was dubbed the Boopy Lady. Uh, and that was, you know, one that has always stuck by my heart. Um, and... In between then, I was cast. In between then and now, I was cast as Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica. Uh, I was uh, Sakuya in Sword Art Online. Uh, I was also cast as Squiggly from Skullgirls, Leia from Tales of Exilia, um, Annie Lionheart in Attack on Titan, uh, Merlin in The Seven Deadly Sins, and um, Sailor Neptune in the Viz Media dub of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal, among many, many other roles that I can't even try and list to you right now, because as soon as I do, they just disappear, because there's too many of them. A uh, couple of my favorite, see, I'm getting all these out of the way, because I'm trying to avoid the same questions that I get, so I think maybe you guys can be a little more creative. Canadians are creative, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Give yourself more credit than that. A um, <clears throat> couple of my favorite characters, uh, people ask me that all the time, and for me I always give them the same answer, which is, do we have any parents in the room? No parents? Do we have anyone that has more than one sibling? More than two siblings? Okay. Is it easy for you guys to choose a favorite sibling? So. Huh? So. How this works is everyone has a favorite, mm -hmm. but you don't discuss the favorite. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's it's that, but it's also I I think of them all like my children, so it's difficult to choose favorites. But let's be real, I have favorites. Um, a couple of my favorites, the the top three uh, for me are uh, Annie from Attack on Titan, because <laughs> it's Annie, um, Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins. I mean, look at her. Um, and uh, Sailor Neptune from Sailor Moon. And what's really cool about Sailor Moon is that's actually a very fun story that I'd be happy to share with you guys, if you'd like to hear it. I'm not getting any confirmation. Do you guys want to hear it? Okay, thank you. It's going to take audience participation. Um, the first anime that I ever saw was Sailor Moon, back in the 90s on Toonami, and that was the my gateway into anime. That was the first anime I ever watched. And this was before they ended up dubbing the later seasons. This was uh, when Deke was still taking over the Sailor Moon dub as far as, uh, before Cloverway did. So that was my first introduction to the English dub. Then years later, they introduced, uh, you know, more characters. And then before they brought the later seasons on, I was able to legally 
uh, watch the episodes, the later seasons, in Japanese. And immediately, the moment that Uranus and Neptune come into the show, I fell in love with them. I think they are the coolest characters in the entire show. That's saying a lot because there are a lot of cool characters in that show. Uh, but they immediately became my favorite characters. Um, I originally really loved Uranus a little, I don't want to say a little more than Neptune, but then again, I loved Neptune because she's so beautiful and perfect, and like, you know, her element is, is water, the ocean, which I've always loved. So I loved it. Uh, then fast forward to <laughs> X amount of years later, I'm not going to age myself, X amount of years later, when Viz Media picked up the rights for Sailor Moon, and they released the two first seasons in English, and I thought, oh, I would love to be a part of that. And at conventions, people would ask me, is there a dream role that you have? Is there a role that you want to play that you, know, you haven't played yet? And I had two answers for that. The first was Harley from Batman, Harley Quinn from the Batman series, because she's awesome, or Poison Ivy, or Catwoman, because I love the sirens, they're awesome. And the second was either Sailor Uranus or Sailor Neptune or Sailor Moon. And I said, but you know, if I don't get that, that's fine. I would just love to be a part of it. I would be happy to be at the monster of the week, the monster of the episode. I'd be happy to play one of the villains. I don't care. I just would love to be a part of Sailor Moon because it's my childhood and it's the first anime. Blah, 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 blah. So then fast forward to about a year and a half, maybe two years later, I received an email from a studio, and they said, hey Lauren, we're holding auditions for a show right now, and we would love if you would read for it. And I opened the email, and the auditions were for Sailor Uranus, Sailor Neptune, Sailor Saturn, and uh, Mr. Snipe. And I just about lost my show. Um, I was very excited, but I was also nervous, so incredibly nervous because I did not want to lose out on this opportunity. I did not want to lose out on a dream role that I had. So I said, okay, you can do this. So I worked on the audition for hours and hours and hours, which by the way, that's not, it's not always how long auditions take. So I auditioned for it. I auditioned for all three characters. I sent it in. And then uh, I was in Texas a few weeks later actually recording for the first season of Attack on Titan. Or maybe it was a later part of Attack on Titan. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, then I received an email saying, congratulations, Lauren, you've been cast as Sailor Neptune. I swear to you, I was speechless. I was like, oh my God, it's actually happening. So that happened. Um, so yeah, favorite roles, Neptune, Merlin, and Annie. Let's see, what else? Oh, how can you get into voice acting? I can't tell you. Can't tell you how to get into voice acting because everyone's path is different. So I cannot give you a step-by-step -step way I'm getting in. I can tell you that you should train in theater, try and find some voiceover classes. You're in Canada, for Lord's sake. So that shouldn't be too difficult especially since the original Sailor Moon dub was done here, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and uh, that's uh, all I can suggest on that. Uh, let's see, what? I live here too. Huh? I live in this city. I'm sorry? They live in this city. Who? The Sailor Moon. Oh, yes, they do, they do. Um, so yes, so I think that's, I think I've covered most of the questions that I get asked. So now it's your guys' turn to be creative and ask me different questions that you think I've never gotten before. Yes. So, like I mentioned, all the, the, Sailor Moon, the original Sailor Moon cats are like all here. They like mm -hmm. live here. But I mean, you mentioned following the show. So we follow shows with actors in mm -hmm. them. Do you have any actors that you're particularly fond of their performances? Well, I don't really have the time to do that anymore. Um, I, I don't know if you're referring to anime specifically or... Any, any, any voice actors that you I, 
all of my voice, I love all of my voice actor friends and I respect all of them, so I try and watch as many of their work, as, as much of their work as I can, uh, but that doesn't happen a whole lot, so. <laughs> but that's a good question. Uh, I follow a lot of voice actors, I follow all of my friends, essentially. So that was the first question. Yes. Have you had any sort of interesting reactions if you're showing people that aren't into anime, whether it's family or friends or colleagues? It's a very good question. Them? That's a very good question. My uh, <laughs> my boyfriend knows nothing about anime, so he is very much like I don't. I mean, he loves obviously who does you know even if you're not an anime, you know about Dragon Ball, so he knows about Dragon Ball, and he really wants to see Dragon Ball Super. But he doesn't know anything about Attack on Titan. You know, he knows about Sailor Moon a little bit because it was so popular. Um, but uh, his reaction to it is, I don't get it. And that's okay, because he's new to it. Um, it's a trap. As far as <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it is, yeah. So um, apart from that, uh, no, most of the people in my life know about anime, animu, as some people call it. Um, so, it, not really any strange reactions, uh, just more of, oh, okay. It's really funny when you find out that big celebrities are big fans of anime, like Michael B. Jordan, who is in Black Panther, he's a big anime fan. Uh, John Cena, John Cena is a huge anime fan. Uh, the New England Patriots have an anime club, which I think is hilarious and amazing at the same time. Um, the I could not tell you which team it was because I don't know football very well, but there was a particular uh, player on a very popular team that, dr that cosplayed as a Naruto character and went to Comic-Con. And he got to go on the big Naruto panel of that Fizz was throwing and everything. That's pretty amazing. So, do we have any more questions? Yes. Do you ever collect memorabilia or merchandise of your characters? And if so, what's some of your favorite things? I do. Uh, I obviously don't have a lot of shelf room now because I've been doing this for so long. But uh, I do have a few Neptune figurines. I have a Kyoko figurine. I, there are no figurines for Annie, so I have to settle for a plushie of her. It's fine, whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, I also have a Kyoko spear that someone made me, which was awesome. Um, what else? I have amazing fan art that people have given me of my characters. Um, what else? Uh, oh gosh, I know there's one that I just love and I can't think of it. Um, yeah, I collect a lot. <laughs> um, but I, I, I love it because it reminds me of all the great opportunities that I've had. And it reminds me just how successful I've been and, and how grateful I am to be a part of this. And, and I'm able to come to conventions to meet you guys and everything. And it also shows me how much you guys appreciate what we do and, and it really makes it more enjoyable. So, yeah. But I have a lot of favorites. I just can't remember them. Do we have any other? Yes. Remind me if you play the, the games that you voiced in, so like Smash. So, I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, I'm wondering if you play you know, like any video games that you Oh boy. Um, well, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't have the time to play video games. I wish I did. So unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to play a lot of the video games that I've been in. I haven't played Smash yet. I haven't played Fire Emblem. <laughs> I am still trying to work on playing Tales of Exilia. That should say something to you. Um, I really want to play Dragon Guard 3 because that was a good one. Uh, yeah, I really wish I played more games that I was in. I am, um, <clears throat> a game that I really want to play is the, the new Fist of the North Star game, uh, because my, my character is like, I don't know what you would call her, she's, she owns a bar, but she's also the announcer of the, um, uh, Gladiator games, but I, I don't remember what the purpose of that is. Anyway, it's a lot of fun, but that's a game, huh? Oh, it's been out for a while. 
Yeah, catch up. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Oh goodness, two at the same time. Oh, I'm a lucky girl. Yellow, then you. Uh, what is your creative process like when you're coming to find a character that you're going to voice? Well, that's a bit tricky because as actors we do bring our own niche to the characters, but because if we're talking about anime or video games, if we're talking about dubbing them, the characters are already set. So it's really just about us trying to find the personality for that character, agree with that personality of the character, and then just try and find a voice that suits it. Hopefully that makes sense. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you ever record with other actors, or is it always just going into the booth alone? Uh, for anime and video games, dubbing, it's always going to be one actor at a time. So, no, we do not record together. For original animation, yes, but not for dubbing. Like, you know, um, Japanese to English. Uh -huh. So, if, if it was something that, um, where, like, it hadn't been animated yet, then maybe they would get the cast to do like a, a collective uh, read of it? Or? It depends, but yes. So like Powerpuff Girls, for example, um, that's done with a few actors in the booth because that's not, that's, that's animated after the voice acting has been done. So, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Do we have any other questions? Don't forget my rule, yes. Oh, no, 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 no. The trip was over a few days. <laughs> not, certainly not that long. And no, actually, with technology, we are able to record from LA and to send, and send it over to Texas. Like around that time, it wasn't just tight, it was like Index, I think? Uh, Index and the first season of High School DxD, it was a lot, but that was not, that was over a span of two days. Oh, really? Yeah, so, yeah. It was a very short trip. <laughs> Yeah, we did. Yes. Do you have a favorite line or moment when recording Zenobia? Uh, gosh, the only one that I can remember is "Isay, I want your babies." That's the only. <laughs> that's the only line I remember. But I will tell you that, um, you know, Josh Greeley, who is the current voice of Isay, uh, he's just so funny as Isay. He's so hilarious. Which, by the way, uh, there is a high school DxD panel tomorrow. Uh, which I think it's the first one that I will have ever done, so that'll be fun because I have not seen <laughs> barely any of High School DxD, so that's going to be funny and interesting, and it's going to be laughable. Anyway, <laughs> but that's the only line that I remember. But Zenobia is a badass. She's really cool. With big boobs. Anyway, do we have another question? Yes. Uh, this one's actually from did they text you? Yeah. That's amazing. Like, uh, like a, uh, he's a gamer, so... Oh, okay. Uh, he wants to know, um, he, uh, he's a huge fan of Fire Emblem. Nice. Uh, you voiced uh, Robin in multiple appearances. Mm -hmm. but, uh, he was wondering if uh, you would actually voice her in Awakening also, but weren't credited for some reason. Because um, apparently it's Wendy Lee and Michelle Dodd. Yeah, I, I think the way they did that, it was very, like, you could choose different voices for her. I think that's why. Um, but I couldn't tell you. <laughs> You're not sure if you actually worked on Awakening or not? No, what I said was, is that I think they might have recycled my lines. Does that make sense? So I didn't think I had to come in and record any new uh, lines, if that makes sense. But because you have an option to choose different voices for that character, I think that's why. I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you. That's more of a production question, more so than me. <laughs> yes? Um, I absolutely love your work in Charlotte. <gasps> Thank you! Oh, Charlotte! Yes. That show will break your heart. Yeah, so how was it like working on that show? Oh boy. Well, um, what's really funny, and I don't really give myself a lot of uh, pats on the back, um, but let me tell you, I was really surprised at how similar 
myself and the Japanese actress sounded together, um, just because I took that that raspy voice that she has, and I just turned it into now Tomori. And it was just really funny, but Tomori was such a fun character to play because she's so, she's very similar to me in some ways and, and not. When she's hype, when she gets hyper, that's me. When I'm hyper, that that's basically me. Um, I'm all, <laughs> one of my favorite moments, it's such a small moment, but I believe it's, um, I don't remember what episode it is, but it's the episode where Yusa and Misa come into the, the picture. And they're talking to Misa and um, her, uh, Yusa's friends, you know, the, the, the punk kids are in the, the, wherever they are, the basement or wherever the room is. And he's giving Tomori attitude or something. Or no, it's not him. Sorry, no, it's, it's Takajo. Takajo goes up to her. And he says, oh, well, maybe it's this. He says something s smart and intelligent because it's Takajo. <laughs> and Tomori just kicks him. Like, she interrupts him and she kicks him. And she says, yeah, well, no one asked you. So I love that. She has so much spunk and energy. And I love it. That's a very, very good show and so underrated. But I will tell you, though, every time there's a fan of Charlotte, they are dedicated and they love it so much. It's such a good show, such a good show. Um, and oh, I get teary-eyed just thinking about it. It seriously just rips your heart in two. Has anyone in here not seen Charlotte? Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful show. I highly recommend it. It's funny, it's dramatic, it's beautiful. It's very unique in my opinion. So, and it might deal with time drum, what? <laughs> Anyway, do we have another question? And thank you for your uh, comment, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you, and your question. Did you, did someone raise their hand? Maybe I'm high, it's fine. <laughs> do we have any other questions? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, well. You're saving your peers from me uh, picking on them. I'm uh, sure they're excited yeah. about that. Um, are you a SAG member, and if so, does that like help you get work? Uh, well, being being part of the union doesn't automatically give you work. No, but I mean, like, are you like, what what like, what's the percentage of like union versus non-union productions? And if you're in the union, are you not allowed? To? Oh gosh, that I couldn't tell you. Uh -huh. That's all the statistics, really. <laughs> that I unfortunately can't answer. I'm sorry. I, mean, I don't. I don't need the exact numbers. It's just I think that a lot of people that. Um, well, I mean, I guess it would depend on if they if they also acted in, in live action stuff or whatever. But sure. I seem to recall that a lot of the people that have worked with Funimation for a long time are non-union. It's just more convenient for them. I couldn't tell you um, honestly. I really couldn't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Oh, yes. I'm not going to see your hand if you're holding it all the way down here. you got to raise it up high like you're proud. Uh, Marty, do you have any favorite lines from, 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 the, from the Madoka anime? Do I have any favorite lines from Madoka? Yeah, yeah it's Madoka, not Madoka. It's Madoka. <laughs> um, do I have any favorite lines? I have many favorite lines. That's the answer to your question. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. You're my hero. Thank you. What? No, I'm good. I'm good for right now. Thank you. That was your question, right? Do you want to extend the question? You what? Oh my God. Okay. The the joke is, you asked me if I had a favorite line, and I said yes. So what would the follow-up to that be? <laughs> yes, thank you. Good job. <laughs> See, I told you I put people on the spot. Um, um, well, I have, I have a lot of favorite lines. Uh, the one that comes to mind is, um, it's when Kyoko first comes into the series and uh, Kyubei says, what are you going to do, Kyoko? And Kyoko says, simple. I'll just put her dumb rookie ass out of commission. 
permanently. That's a, that's a fun one, and a lot of fans like that one. So, Do we have any other questions? Yes. I do. Uh, was it, uh, Shadow! Yes, I remember Livia. Uh, was it um, rewarding or challenging for you to do a slight British accent? And uh, would you look forward to playing her again? Because she might appear in a future show. Oh, how do you know? Oh, really? Yeah, there's like this new upcoming series called like, The Case Files of Lord El Malloy, which is like a grown up waiter, uh, Lucy in this character. Oh, okay. I have not seen Fate, so I don't know any of the characters except for Saber. <laughs> and what's the dude's name? Archer. Yes, Archer. I'm terrible. Those are the only two characters that I know. <laughs> um, I would love to play her again. I hope I get to play her again. Doing a British accent is very fun when you do it properly, so, you know. But if it's a terrible one, then it's not fun to listen to, is it? Shut up! <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, do we have any other questions? Yes. So for like some of the bigger animes like Attack on Titan, Seven Deadly Sins, where there's material mm -hmm. like uh, beyond what is in the anime, do you... mean like manga? The, yeah, the yeah. manga. Do you like look ahead at where your character's going or do you just stick to where they're at in the show? That's a very good question. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I it, the person that uh, the person that may have spoiled something for me today. Are you in here? No. Okay. Good. I don't read manga um, because I don't have the time. So I am not caught up on Attack on Titan, the manga, for example. And someone spoiled it for me today. Seven Deadly Sins either. No, no manga. I, I prefer not to, honestly. I mean, if I if if I know the anime is not going to be out for a while, or if it's never happening, then maybe. But I really don't have the time. Merlin um, is, is going to be cool. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for telling me that, and without it being spoiled, I appreciate that. That's what a lot of people on the internet need to learn how to do instead of just posting who dies in Game of Thrones. Huh. Sorry, people are dumb on the internet. It's dumb. If you have spoiled something for people on the internet, you should be ashamed of yourselves and punish yourselves because it's, it's, there's a special place in hell for you. That's all I'm gonna say, so. But good to know, thank you. Even past all the stuff that in season two? Oh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, okay. Well, you just made me excited. Sweet. Do we have any other questions? I have a question for you guys. Who saw Endgame? Who did not see Endgame? I, I just don't want to go alone. I'm waiting for... Oh! <laughs> I don't blame you. It's an experience you shouldn't go alone to. Uh, but sorry, keep you, those of you who have not seen it, raise your hands again. What is the matter with you? How can you st how can you not stand to see it? What? Why? Why haven't you guys seen it? I got a better setup in my house. Wow, so elitist. I hide myself in the basement. Perfect. <laughs> Why haven't you seen it? I'm sorry, say that again? Oh, I see. Okay. And who else had not seen it? Why? <laughs> Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Really? Detective Pikachu was really good. Oh, I've heard good things about it. I just don't have an interest in seeing it. I've heard that the Pokemon look really cool, though. Um, I think I think that's probably the best part of it. Um, but... You got but, against the Canadian icon. Huh? What you got against the Canadian icon? Come on. Nothing. I know. it is. The, he is the Canadian icon, absolutely. But Endgame. People have been waiting 
10 years for this. And look, I didn't understand the gravity of it until, again, my boyfriend is a huge Marvel fan, like huge. He has an Avengers tattoo, for God's sakes, okay? He is a huge Avengers fan and huge Marvel fan. He kept telling me, you don't understand. And I said, I, you know, he says, we need to get tickets for opening night. And I said, it'll be fine. It's fine. You know, like, we'll get tickets. He's like, no, you don't understand. People have been waiting 10 years for this. And I said, I mean, you know, I get it. I bet he's, no, people have been waiting for this moment for 10 years. So... Because some of you haven't seen it, I won't talk about it because I am not going to be a dick like that and spoil stuff for you because I am not that type of person. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Now how about Game of Thrones? Who watches Game of Thrones? <laughs> oh my god, you people, really? I'm so disappointed in all of you right now, except for you and you, you're fine. <laughs> you don't have a nice HBO, what do you want from us? Oh my goodness. Get someone else's password and stuff and get HBO Go, that's what it's for. It's not in Canada. <laughs> Is it not in Canada? Oh, that sucks, I'm sorry. That's a shame, still no excuse, it's fine. No, uh, it's, that season was something. Anyway, so. You know. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Um, A new face. <laughs> uh, this is your first time to Toronto? No, I've been to Toronto before. Uh, the last time I was here, I was uh, at Pre uh, the Pretty Heroes two-day event convention. Um, I love Canada. I've been to, oh God, Toronto, Edmonton, love them all. Um, Okay, mom. <laughs> um, uh, um, um, oh, New Brunswick. I love New Brunswick. Who's been to New Brunswick? It's so beautiful there. I love it. I would love to retire there at some point. Anyway, um, Vancouver. I haven't been to Vancouver in a long time. But uh, where else? Oh, uh, uh, Montreal. I've been to Montreal. I know that's not the actual way to say it, but I'm too lazy to say it the actual way. Uh, let's see. And I don't remember where else, but I've been all over Canada, and I love you guys. You guys are so nice and so friendly, and it's awesome. So, yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. Do we have any other questions? I'm going to pick on someone in three. There you go. <laughs> Hi. Um, if you could have any of the superpowers from Charlotte, which would you choose? Okay, well, hold on. Let me answer this. Um, Takajo, that's not teleportation. That is not teleportation. That is super speed. There is a difference. It is not teleportation. Has that, who has seen Charlotte again? Can you guys agree with me? Yes. Okay, thank you. It is not teleportation. That is ridiculous. I love Takajo, but, and I love, oh, what I love also, sorry, I will actually will answer your question, but what I love is that Takajo is this nerdy guy with glasses, and, and he's, he's a total wimp. He's a total wimp. He gets hurt and injured all the time because of his power. He takes off his shirt. He is ripped <laughs> as hell, and it makes no sense whatsoever, but, I think he even says that because he gets hurt so much, he has to stay in good shape. But he's, he's next to you, who is the main character, and you's just scrawny guy. And then Takatra just takes off his uniform, and he's ripped. He has like a six-pack and back muscles. And it's like, what? Okay. So, what superpower would I have? Oh, I... Mm, well, I don't think I would want Yu's power because that can be self-destructive and I think that could backfire really quickly. Um, not to Kajos because as much as I love him, he's useless. Um, I don't really understand Yu's, oh, well, that's not true. Yusa can communicate with the dead, is that her? 
Is that her power? Huh? They can possess her. They can possess her. Okay. Um, I mean, I think Tomari's power is pretty cool. How she can go invisible anytime she wants, you know? I think that's pretty cool. Um, that's the beauty of this show, is that it's not perfect. That the powers are cool, but none of them are perfect. They all have limitations, and it's awesome. It's not perfect at all. I love it. So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I saw another hand. Yes? Um, a lot of fans that you watch, like a lot of work you've done uh, from Netflix on like Crunchyroll or Netflix, but this may be a little sad that like, maybe you don't see as much stuff to sign because of Netflix's business model of like, charging hard prices. Oh. Well, luckily we have a thing called fan art that people make and create and, and some of the art that I've seen is beautiful and amazing and there's posters and everything so it is a shame because I do know that Aniplex has higher prices but they give out really good quality so I can't, I can't blame them too much for that. So. And plus, Aniplex likes bloopers and outtakes so you can't argue with that. I saw another hand somewhere but maybe I'm just imagining it. Okay, well, do we have another question? Okay, in three, two, one, see? It works like a charm. There you go. Just to clarify so I don't mistake, if you play as Karen as a Street Fighter Five, yes? I do, Karen Kanzuki, yeah. yes. Okay. I believe so, yeah. Uh, they kind of, well, they kind of explained that they're going to make a part two. Have you gotten like any news about it, or have they just gone completely insane? I have not heard anything about it, but when did they say that? Was it recent? Uh, I think it was honestly like a year after they released the first one. I can't remember the exact dates, but. Uh, Are you talking about the arcade edition? Yes, but uh, I remember they released kind of like a I could not tell you. I just remember doing an arcade edition, but that's out. That's been out for a while. I cannot tell you. I'm so sorry. I have no idea. <laughs> they don't tell us anything. I mean, they do, but I've done so much. The second question is, have you, do you play, have you ever played as your character here in I've tried fighting a battle with her before, and I sucked horribly because she's very technical, and she's not easy to... Play. I've heard a lot of people tell me that. I'm sad that she lost Evo, but she was so close. It's okay. One year. <laughs> One year she'll win. And everyone will do the laugh, which I cannot do today. So, <laughs> but uh, um, I have tried to fight with her, but I fail miserably at it. So, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Uh, you voice Kasumi in the Deadpool or Live franchise? Kasumi, yes. Um, did you uh, have the freedom to do your own interpretation, or were you instructed to try and sound similar to the past actresses who voiced her before? Well, out of respect for the original Japanese, we, too, we do try and keep it similar as much as we can without mimicking it, because we don't want to do that. We're still original. Um, but out of respect, yes, we wanted to keep it close to the original Japanese. Did you ever There was only one before me, um, that was Kari Walgren, and I believe, I was told that she only, it was a, I don't remember. It's from the 3DS. A 3DS, yes. But I guess before then, she had never had an English voice. Uh, as, that's what I was told, at least, I have, by a fan, so I have no idea, and I trust your guys. Was that you? Yes! Thank you, I appreciate it. Michael, right? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I don't remember who tells me things, I'm sorry. But yeah, maybe you can explain it. Um, as far as I know, there was a 3DS game that they were trying to create a big enough roster. Mm -hmm. And I think this was around when the 3DS first came out. <laughs> and it was the first game to have, well, at least in modern, because I remember when DOA 2 came out, I think they had a new Oh, okay. And that was like PlayStation 
Oh, I remember those I days. But I don't know who voiced the character. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe it was Kari Walker then. Maybe, I have no idea. But no, I have not. In answer to your question, I have not. When did beach volleyball come out? When was that? I didn't do that, but I was just curious. Xbox, right? That's an yeah. Xbox, yeah. So, so 90, 16 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels like it, yeah. Wow. Well, beach volleyball. So silly. They <laughs> <sighs> basically banned it from North America. The third one. They banned it? The third one. Oh. They never uh, translated the third one. Oh, sure. okay. Well, see, I, we don't know these things unless we do our research or unless we're big fans of it. And I have not. I did not learn that, so thank you. Thank you for teaching me that, you guys. I feel very educated today. Do we have any more questions? We have about 10 minutes left, so if you have a question, and if you're feeling brave, get it out there. Are you cosplaying as Kiki? You look very cute. Do you have a Gigi with you? Oh, can I hold him? Yay, bring him up. I love Gigi. He's my favorite character in the whole movie, even though at the end he doesn't say anything, which is stupid, <laughs> but whatever. Hi, buddy. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, now I have a buddy. I'll give him back to you, I promise. He'll be safe. Bye. No, never. <laughs> never. Here. Okay, do we have any more questions? I will turn this van around and I will pick on someone in three, two. I'm looking at you in the green jacket. Yeah, you. Um, I guess what would be your opinion on the ending of Charlotte? You know, that's a good question, actually. So see what happens, guys, when you're, you know, when a little pressure is put on you. Um, it's actually a good question. Spoiler-free question. Spoil, well, no, unless you, who wants to see Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> Can't answer that question because it's not a spoiler-free question. So do you have another question? Oh. You are literally taking a picture at the worst possible time. <laughs> you put the cup down. No! <laughs> anyway, okay, so can you think of another question? Goodness, goodness gracious. Well, I have a question for you guys. What are you guys excited about as far as new anime coming out? Because you guys know more about that than I do. Are there any like big show, big new shows coming out other than My Hero Academia? Because that's <laughs> what's huge right now. But yes, IQ. IQ. What's IQ? IQ. Is a IQ. Anime. What? It's like a volleyball anime, and like. Oh, good lord! Moving on. <laughs> Ooh, see, that's interesting. <laughs> what? That's insane. That's so cool. Uh, what is it? Vinland Saga? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes, I've heard of that, actually. Isn't it on Tsunami? Yes, it is on Tsunami. Yeah, very cool. I've heard that's creepy. That's a good Fine, you can just stay there. It's fine. Yeah, in the back. Uh, well, it's already out, but part two of uh, Back to Back to Season 3, I haven't seen it anymore. I haven't seen any of Season 3, so I'm right there with you, bud. <laughs> you don't watch it. Huh? You love the Back to Back, of course, you watch it. Good for you. Yeah, better. Good influence. <laughs> Did you like Season 2 or no? I loved it, personally. I loved the voice and everything. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Do you, are you liking season three more than season two? Yes, because of the characters. The oh, okay. That's good to know. Yes. There's going to be a second season of uh, High Score Girl. No, which one? Uh, high Score Girl. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Um, so they haven't actually announced it yet, but I mean, so far they've been working up to making all of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Yes. So they've been going at it slowly, and it's, it's pretty much a lock that they're going to come up with the other stuff. 
okay. French of it too, right? The mm -hmm. thing I find most interesting about this particular show in English though is that they had like an all-star cast of voice actors working. Like everyone who's been anybody gets a bit part, <laughs> which is interesting, you know? That's funny. That is very funny. I, I was uh, Mariah in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, actually. That was fun. She stuffed her bra with magnets. <laughs> don't ask me. I have no idea. I also don't why, I don't know why there's a dog that farts in people's faces. I have no idea. That show itself is on drugs, so, you know. <laughs> it's a bizarre adventure. Exactly. I guess when you're on a really bad trip, you go on a bizarre adventure, so... Do we have any other questions before we wrap this up, guys? Any final questions? I have a question for you guys. Uh, who is going to be here tomorrow? Okay. Just to let you guys know that tomorrow at 11, right? Yes, that's the High School DxD panel. And then I will have a panel from 1.30 to, I'm sorry, I'll have an autograph signing, 1.30 to 2.30. Uh, I would highly suggest that you show up early because as soon as the signing is over, I have to book it to the airport. So if you guys have not gotten anything signed by me, then that will be the last chance you will get this weekend. So, yes? Bring up the autobiography free since I know some voice actors. Are I'm sorry? Bring up the, the autobiography free since sometimes people charge for the autobiography. Yes, they do. You'll have to show up and actually look at our prices. But uh, we each have different prices, so you have to come. You have to come check it out. Um, but I think that's about it. So thank you guys for coming, and I hope you all have a safe and good night. Thank you. Thanks, guys.